Hey, I got a question for you. Are you an active B2B consultant? Are you an experienced professional who is looking to start into the consulting industry? Or are you a student wondering whether or not starting a career in consulting is worth it? If yes to any of those questions, you are a great fit to have a 15 minutes free coaching call with me. And during that call, we will be looking at your career and life goals, as well as your current and past experiences. And we will also be able to figure out whether or not we can together build a roadmap towards building your desired career with your desired lifestyle. So don't hesitate to get in touch with me at consultinglifestyle.fm slash coaching, C-O-A-C-H-I-N-G, consultinglifestyle.fm slash coaching. Now let's go and listen to the episode. Hello, hello and welcome to the Consulting Lifestyle to Lee Shea McDonough. Lee, how are you? I am doing great, Dio. Thank you so much for having me. Yes, uh, I am uh, excited to uh, to have you. Uh, today you are uh, a coach, uh, Lee, but you have uh, like a, there is a certain career path that uh, you will share with us. So uh, can you, uh, for the audience, uh, share the highlights uh, of your uh, career story? Yes. So today I am the founder of Coach with Clarity, which is an ICF accredited training and education company for people who are looking to build their coaching mastery as well as their business skills. I've been doing that work for about seven years. And before I started Coach with Clarity, I was a psychotherapist for almost 15 years. So I started off my career in social work and public health. Uh, went through the whole supervision process to become an independently licensed therapist, really enjoyed doing that work for quite a while, and then had a series of changes in my personal life that led me to want to explore some different paths career-wise. That's ultimately what took me from therapy to coaching and then from coaching to coach training. Okay, okay. And uh, lo location-wise, location it is the same location? Uh, no. What I mean, where you're no, okay, yeah, exactly. No, that, great question. Because while I was a therapist, my husband was in the United States Air Force, so we moved around quite a bit. And in fact, we spent the last four years of his military time in Germany, which was mm. wonderful. Um, and I had a few roles over there. So I started out as a therapist for military members and their families. And then I moved into more of a leadership position on base as the liaison between base leadership and all of the helping agencies on base. So that was great. And then yeah. we moved back to the States and my husband transitioned from military life to civilian life. He bought a dental practice. He's a periodontist by training and my mm -hmm. children. Uh, but when we moved back, we're eight and six. And so they had essentially grown up in Germany and had very few memories of what it was like to live in the United States. So yeah. we as a family were facing an enormous transition and I pressed pause on my career for about nine months just to help everyone figure this out. And after about nine months, I started getting the urge to return to some sort of professional work. And yet I also had a sense that I was meant to do something not in the mental health field, still related, still serving others and helping other people, but moving away from diagnosis and treatment and more into other forms of support. And I think honestly, I have my husband to thank because I was watching him learn how to be a business owner while also being a clinician. And that business yep. piece, that's not something they teach you in dental school or in the Air Force. There's a lot of on-the-job training, and it was not always easy. And I remember thinking, wouldn't it be wonderful if there was someone who could support him along his journey, almost like a therapist for your business? And mm -hmm. the more research I did, the more I learned about consulting and coaching. And that's when I started seeing oh, maybe I can take my existing skill set as a therapist, blend it with all of this small business knowledge I've acquired over the last year supporting my husband and his business. What would it be like to build a business around that? And so that's what got me started into coaching. Okay, okay. So so maybe it was your, your husband actually the first person you coached uh, from a business perspective or? I would say informally, um, informally. And, and it's such a funny question because even to this day, um, you know, I support him in his business and, and provide some, some consultation on request, but I have to clarify sometimes by asking him, 
do you want to speak to your wife right now? Or do you want to speak to a business coach? <laughs> and for the sake of our relationship, I do my best to keep those roles very clearly separated. Um, I mean, being a coach and using coaching skills and communication just kind of comes naturally to me. So there's definitely a little bit of that even in our in our interpersonal relationship. But I, I try to keep the boundaries pretty separate from when I'm supporting him in his business versus our marriage. Okay. Okay. So it's very, uh, very specific context. So being in Germany and uh, working with uh, military families, it's such a such a specific context. So when you come back to that uh, civilian life uh, in the uh, uh, in the U.S. and you have that uh, uh, each to say, okay, I want to help, but in another in another context, uh, who are the first people or organizations you get in touch with to to confirm that uh, it's the right decision? Yes, it started with my own personal research into coaching. And then I tend to be someone, I'm a lifelong learner, and I really appreciate programs that have a code of ethics, that have a set curriculum, that have very clearly delineated objectives and expectations. And that's ultimately what led me to the International Coaching Federation, which is probably, I would say, the preeminent professional organization for coaches in the world. There are several mm -hmm. other organizations as well, all of whom do good work, but ICF is kind of the primary one. And so I knew that if I was going to go into coaching, I wanted to receive training from a program that was accredited by ICF because I knew then that their material would cover the coaching core competencies, that it would be ethically grounded. And so that's when I started doing my research. I spoke to some family friends who were coaches and consultants. Uh, mm -hmm. So it was a little bit a mix of my own research coupled with personal communications with people in the field. Uh, and then ultimately, I trusted my gut. I had a gut sense of where I was supposed to be and how I was supposed to get there. And so I, I trusted that. And, and I will say in my life, when I listen to my intuition, when I follow what it suggests, I'm rarely led on the wrong path. Whereas when I don't pay attention to that little voice, when I do something else, that's, that's usually where trouble begins and I kind of have to reorient myself. Okay. Okay. Yes. Yes. Uh, so despite having all those, uh, doing all this academic learning that we all do, uh, intuition remains uh, a very, uh, how can I say that, trustful, uh, trustful friend, <laughs> if I can say it like that. Oh, I love that. Uh, I love that. Um, and then, so when you start uh, the, the, the activity of coaching, it's about, about seven years, uh, uh, seven years ago. Uh, today, are you practicing uh, alone or with a team? Do you have a kind of office? Because it's, uh, I think you start pre-pandemic. I don't know if the pandemic has changed. So, okay, there are a lot of questions I've asked at once. <laughs> but let's say, <laughs> what was the difference between like, yeah, seven years ago, 2016, and now? Oh, yes. When I first started, I was bootstrapping out of a closet, literally a closet <laughs> in my house. Um, and then I kind of took over a little office space as I grew. Uh, and it was probably three years before I started renting a separate office space outside my home um, because I did have some clients locally that I was seeing face to face. And so I could either go to their work or they could come to mine. But also I wanted to start separating my work, my work life, my work identity from Lee at home. And so while I still will work from home from time to time, because that's always fun to work in your mm -hmm. pajamas. Um, a lot of times I find that when I come to my office space, and it's where I record my podcast and podcast interviews like this one, it's where I see local clients, I just get in the zone. It's like, oh, I am here to work. And so I will come in on weekends sometimes if I've got a project that I need to finish or a, an episode to record. And I find that I am so much more productive and efficient here than when I'm at home and can be distracted by the laundry or the dishes or Netflix. Mm. So I find for my own efficiency, having a separate space is helpful um, only because I know how I can get uh, if I'm if I'm at home and left to my own devices. Yeah, we we have a lot in common uh, in your answer. <laughs> <laughs> I also I, I'm also I also recently moved to another uh, another office than being uh, at home. Um, and you, you said you said about uh, you talk about going to clients or clients coming to you. So 
typically what are the type of uh, uh, people uh, working uh, working with you? I have noticed an evolution of who I serve throughout my journey as a coach. When I first started, and likely because of my background as a therapist, I tended to attract a lot of therapists interested in business coaching, how they could mm -hmm. build their practices, how they could scale. Uh, what was interesting though, is the more work I did with therapists and healthcare providers around business coaching, the more they began to ask me, tell me about this coaching thing. How, how did you become a coach? You know, you were a mm -hmm. therapist, now you're a coach. This seems really interesting. Can you help me become a coach? And so it was about three years into my work when I started seeing interest in my ideal clients, not just around coaching, but in how to be a coach. Mm -hmm. And so based on that, I started creating some content around becoming a coach. I ran my first ever small group program called From Couch to Coach. Uh, at the time, it was designed to help therapists transition into coaching. So that's kind of the couch piece. I'm actually running a cohort of it today, and I've expanded outside that initial audience of therapists. Um, because as I've grown, I feel really fortunate that I've attracted people who may not be therapists or healthcare workers, but still have a heart for service, still mm -hmm. lead with intuition, and want to a, a grounded evidence-based way to serve their clients. And so that's really what I've kind of evolved into is moving from business coaching into coach training and education. Now to be a successful coach, you do need to run a successful business. And so there's still business mm -hmm. coaching that I do with my one-on-one -on -one clients or in my group programs. Um, but I really view it now as the business creating the infrastructure so that we as powerful coaches can show up and confidently serve our clients, knowing that we have all of our foundation set okay that's um, th th that's very interesting uh, maybe one of the lesson to the audience very often if someone is thinking of uh, becoming a coach or becoming a um, independent consultant they may attract people that are thinking about doing the same or people that have gone through uh, the same uh, same career path so that's uh, uh, that, that that is very uh, very interesting uh, and as you said now you have a a cohort, a, 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 a program. So uh, is that kind of a membership based or it's more, uh, uh, how can I say that? You have a, one, one program with, uh, with people that you meet uh, at a regular basis, but not necessarily like a membership. Uh, Right. I, so that's such a great question because the answer is all of the above in many ways. <laughs> I have a couple programs. One is an initial training program. So that is for people who want to become coaches and who want to be eligible to be credentialed by the International Coaching Federation. So that is a more traditional course where we have meetings, there's practice, there's mentor coaching and peer coaching. It's, it's pretty robust uh, and, and that's time limited. Then I also have a program, it's the Coach with Clarity Collective. It is a continuing education program through ICF, so you can get all of the credit hours you need to maintain your credential. When I started that about four years ago, it was a traditional membership where people would pay every month or every quarter or every year to stay in the community. And a couple years ago, I moved away from that model and I decided to go to an unlimited access model where there's one fee, you can pay it, all at once or over five months or over 10 months, whatever works for you. But then once, once it's paid, you're in for life. And so I still run the, the content very similarly for live calls a month, all sorts of support, all sorts of goodies and a vault. Uh, but the payment structure has changed. So it's less of a traditional membership style and more of a ongoing group program. Okay. Okay. That's the, actually, that's the first time that I hear uh, about such a scheme. I think that's a, a way of doing so. Uh, I think that, that that's great. Uh, and I have a, I have a question because, you know, coaching, um, we hear it uh, a lot, at least the past uh, five, 10 years. Uh, I think it has uh, exploded. A lot of people have, uh, uh, have become coach. So where uh, do you see, what, what is your uh, differentiator? Or what do you do differently, let's say, that, than, uh, than other coaches? I think one of the things that I appreciate about my coaching style and also what anchors my coaching program is that I'm a believer that when we find the intersection between strategy and intuition, that's the sweet spot. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. And that means understanding how to make space for external knowledge, data, all of the things that we're hearing from other people. Uh, and that can be, you know, metrics and, and indicators, all of those important things. We need that information. And we need to know how to pair it with our own gut feelings, with our own values, with how we want to show up in our coaching practices. And so when we understand how to create space for both the external knowledge and the internal knowing, that is where coaches can really thrive. And so that's the approach that I take when I'm teaching coaching skills, when I'm talking about growing your business. It's always from a place of understanding what's going on in the environment and what information we can receive from that, and then also connecting it with our own internal barometer. So we never feel like we're disconnected or that we don't mm -hmm. belong in our own business. Okay, yeah, this is so difficult and so so important what you just said, like uh, linking strategy with intuition what is internal so do you have like a uh, a way uh, a method for uh, helping people to make those uh, decisions i do i have something that i call the decide framework uh, and it's an acronym so each letter of decide stands for a different step mm -hmm. um, so it's six steps and the first step is determining uh, what it is what the question at hand is so getting really clear on all right i need to make a decision what what does this look like and then the E is exploring that, going even deeper. So not just what decision do I have to make, but why does it matter? Why is it relevant now? How does it connect with my beliefs and my values? Like what's really going on underneath this decision? Because a lot of times on the surface, it looks like one thing, but when we get deeper, it's really about another. So mm -hmm. the first part of that process is about getting really clear on the what and the why of the decision. And then we move into the internal work. And so the C is connect and center. And that could look different for everyone. Um, I know some people find meditation to be a helpful way of connecting. My husband is not a meditator. He likes hiking and being outside, riding his bike. When he's in nature, he feels very connected to himself. So part of this is exploring what's going to work best for you in terms of connecting with your own inner wisdom. Because once you're connected, then we move on to invite, inviting your intuition to speak to you understanding how your intuition speaks to you, how to, how to learn the language of your inner knowing. Um, for some people, it's very sensory. You feel it in your body. For other people, it's more cognitive. You might get a thought or a word, uh, maybe even an image. But understanding the ways that your intuition reveals itself to you is so important because then when we invite it to speak, we're ready to listen. And so once we've made that connection internally, then we move to the last two steps of the DECIDE framework which is discern your next step. So blending all of that inner knowing you've just tapped into with that external data about whatever the issue is at hand. And then the final E is engaging with purpose. Once we've really taken the time to check our own temperature and pay attention to all of the data we're receiving from outside sources and we blend it all together, ideally that's the point at which we can take action and we can engage. So that's, that's kind of a nutshell overview of the decide framework. Yeah, that, no, that's good. That's a, uh, that, that's a very good uh, uh, overview of, uh, of that. And that really helps. I think that that really helps the people that uh, you are, uh, uh, you are working with. Uh, so maybe one, um, uh, uh, one question because uh, we are on the this consulting lifestyle the, the the podcast. So how do you, if you have ever thought about it, like how do you differentiate like being a coach uh, and being a consultant? Yes, you know I think that this is an area where there's a lot of overlap. Yeah, and so I kind of embrace that, and I'll even say to my own clients that I'm a bit of a hybrid practitioner in that I am a coach first. And I will move into a consultant role upon request or with their consent, because sometimes people come to me because they want to know how I've done something or what guidance I might offer them. So that's when I move more into that consultant role of providing my expertise, um, some strategic ideas, kind of brainstorming, whatever it is the client needs. The coach in me, though, then comes back and says, OK, I'm going to take my consultant hat off and I want to check in with you. Everything that I've just shared with you. What resonates? What works for you? What do you want to leave behind? Um, because I think part of the coaching relationship is honoring the fact that my client brings their own wisdom and experience and knowledge. And I never want them to feel like they have to mute 
their own voice mm -hmm. in order to amplify mine. That's, that's not how I work as a coach or a consultant. So I want to make sure that they always feel free to object, to reject some of my guidance, to, to modify it, or to accept what works for them. And so the coaching piece then is a lot about the communication, how I share my own thoughts and ideas, knowing when it's appropriate to do so versus when it's time to elicit ideas from the client first. All sorts of nuances in there, but I find actually that my coaching skills allow me to be a better consultant and my consulting mm -hmm. skills allow me to be a better coach and they really build off each other. Uh, yes, yes, I agree. I think uh, I think it's complementary. Uh acquiring those skills. And, and yes, there is some uh, overlap when you talk about business coaching. Yeah, it, it can look in some aspects similar to what a, a consultant is doing. Uh, and since those, pa those past um, uh, seven years, can you, without sharing a, a specific name or, but can you share like a, a positive story, a success story of something that happened for one of your uh, uh, clients? Yes, there's one in particular I'm thinking of. I've worked with her for a couple of years. And when we first started working together, she was an employee for a school system, working as a school psychologist, providing mm -hmm. support to elementary aged children. Mm -hmm. She really wanted to be a parent coach. She really wanted to start her own coaching practice and support parents in uh, parenting their I would say probably early age, like three to five year old kids. So maybe up to kindergarten or first grade in the States. And so there was a lot of work that the two of us have done over the last few years from moving from a school-based psychologist position where she was facing a lot of crises, putting out a lot of emergency fires mm -hmm. and parents would come and say, just tell me what to do. Give me the plan and just tell me what to do and I'll do it. When she moved into coaching, it was she was still getting a lot of that urgent, please just give me a plan, tell me I'll do it. But coaching really requires you to slow things down at first and engage with your clients in such a way where we're really clear on why does this matter to you? Like, why is this so important? Why now? And how can we leverage your existing wisdom to help problem solve this? So instead of me telling you what to do, let's really dive into what's going to work for you, for your child and your family. And so working with my client, there was a shift in approach how she approached and worked with her clients. There was also a significant mindset shift, multiple actually, that went for her in terms of going from employee to business owner, going from uh, psychologist to coach, the way that she builds relationships with people, the way she markets herself, how she builds her business, so much mindset work there that accompanied the nuts and bolts. Okay, how do you start your business? How do you find clients? How do you do all of this? So over the last two years, it has been amazing to watch her blossom into this fantastic parent coach who has a sustainable business model. Uh, and, and that's really at the heart of what I love to do with my clients yeah. is to just be a part of their journey. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. Knowing that someone who started and has a sustainable business, uh, model for her, I think that's uh, yeah, a great result uh, for what the coach can bring. Um, when, um, uh, one other thing I would like to, uh, uh, I would like to ask is whether or not, uh, the pandemic, uh, so we are now in March, uh, 2023. So it started three years ago, whether or not the pandemic has changed something, uh, in your, uh, in your practice. Yes, it has. Um, initially, everything went virtual. And even my clients who were local, we would still meet through Zoom or online. In fact, I would say the majority of my practice now, 95% is, is virtual, is online. So that was a significant shift. But I also think, too, that what we learned through and are still learning from the pandemic is how important interpersonal connection is. And that even when we had to stay apart from each other, we're, we're social beings as humans. We, we craved that contact with others. And that's what coaching is about. Coaching at its core is about a partnership. It's about a relationship with that other person and how that relationship can help you take action in your life. And so what I found was that there were more people craving that sense of connection and looking for someone to support them through a difficult time, which is why it's such a great time to be a coach. But also more people were 
looking at different ways they could be of service and how they could support people and their communities. And even if they didn't want to become a professional coach, learning how coaching skills can improve those relationships, that has been something that's come out of the pandemic as well. So I've certainly seen growth in my business since March of 2020. Uh, there's this just kind of resurgence of interest in coaching, both professionally, but also personally, and how coaching can make us more content and more connected with the people who matter most to us. Yes, yes, this is uh, really fundamental. And uh, my uh, last question, Lee, uh, will be, um, so I know we have uh, talked a lot about uh, coaching, uh, but we're on Consulting Lifestyle podcast. So uh, when I say Consulting Lifestyle, what does that mean uh, to you? Well, I think the first piece actually is the lifestyle part. And mm -hmm. for me, as someone who owns her own business, the freedom and flexibility that come with the lifestyle piece is paramount to me. I love being able to choose my own clients and set my own schedule. And if I want to work on a Saturday afternoon, I can. And if I want to take a Wednesday morning off, I can. And so that lifestyle piece, uh, having that freedom and autonomy really matters to me. Um, there's a responsibility that comes with that, of course. I have to, if I'm going to set my own schedule, I have to follow it. Um, but I would much rather do that. I think I'm, I'm ruined in terms of working for anyone else ever again in my life. I think I would be a terrible employee um, because of that lifestyle piece. And then the consulting piece, I think, really is about being of service to your clients. How can you show up and be the catalyst for your client's success? How do we show up and, and bring our knowledge and expertise and wisdom and training and allow that to benefit our clients? Whether you're a coach or whether a consultant, I think that service piece is where we leave from. So for me, the consulting lifestyle is about service, it's about freedom, and it's about the ability to create a values-based business that serves you and your people. Oh, excellent. You said values-based, huh? Ah, that, that's very good. <laughs> I like it. Uh, thanks. Uh, th thanks very much, Lee. I think it was uh, I think it was a great interview and a great uh, insight into the world of uh, of coaching. And um, so, where can uh, people uh, find you if they want to get in touch with you? Yes, I have so enjoyed our conversation, Dio. Thank you so much for having me on the show. I would love to continue the conversation with your listeners. You can find me pretty much at Coach With Clarity everywhere. So coachwithclarity.com, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, at Coach With Clarity. And of course, you can find the Coach With Clarity podcast wherever you listen to your shows. Okay, excellent. So uh, thank you very much, Lee, and uh, looking forward to uh, uh, catch up again. Thank you. Oh, I hope so. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you for listening to the Consulting Lifestyle Podcast. If you have enjoyed the episode, leave a review on iTunes or one of your preferred podcasting platform. And if you want to further our relationship, please join our community. Our community is available at consultinglifestyle.fm slash community. Looking forward to keep in touch with you.